Welcome, low ego action heroes. This is Debbie Levitt from DeltaCX.com. We're a full service CX and UX agency. And uh, today is episode two in our mini set of micro lessons about observational research. Uh, today is the first of hopefully eight. Uh, fake, semi-fake observational research sessions that I will be doing. So I want to give you some ground rules for them uh, before we get started. Um, so uh, today we're going to be watching my boyfriend cook. The downside to that is that we have a bit of a small house, which means he's like, 25 feet that way, which means when I say something, you're going to hear it twice. You're going to hear me say it, and then you're going to hear it come out of his computer. So I apologize for that echo. This is the only time uh, that will happen, obviously, when we're talking to our other cooks. Hopefully that won't happen. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we're good. I have the screen arranged so that you'll see mostly our cooks me in a corner and the notes that I'm taking while this is going on. And that way you will be able to um, see the way that I take notes during an observational uh, research session. Now, that means I need a disclaimer. The disclaimer is that I am aware that my note taking style is generally frowned upon. Um, so generally, please note that you will see me take notes in a certain way, and I am not suggesting you copy me. I am evidently taking notes in the way that everybody is told to not do. Um, I heavily, heavily take notes and write down a lot of what people say during the interview. And the general rule of thumb is don't do that. Stay uh, engaged and focused during the interview on the other person and watch your stuff later and write down your notes then. I don't do that. So just know that this is not a case of, hey, be like me. This is a case of, hey, don't be like me. It's better to um, uh, do your recording and be in the moment with that person, take some small notes here and there, especially on things you want to ask them after the observation's done, and then uh, get your notes from watching later. So uh, that's, um, I'm gonna say that in front of all eight because I want people to know that my note-taking style is non-traditional and generally not recommended. Um, and after the observational research is over, we'll debrief a little bit. So stick around if you can, though I do have a phone call eventually. And I see my boyfriend making faces at the camera. You can't see him yet. And he's... <laughs> He's fun. Um, the other thing to know is that because I will be watching our observational subjects, I am not going to be um, looking at the chat room. So if you are writing stuff at me, I'm not going to see it. So I'm going to ask, please don't write anything other than really, really important questions. When we do the debrief after the interview, you can ask me questions about my style. And then after the observation, I'll say, let me just check with my assistant if they have any questions. If you have questions you want me to ask the subject, that's when you put them in. So please don't put anything in before that. Um, I'm just not going to have time to go through the chat room and see it. Um, Kayleen says, what are your reasons for taking notes during the interview? Efficiency. I, I don't have a fantastic reason other than it's the style I've been doing for many years and it works for me. Um, I type bizarrely fast and I have kind of that United Nations translator brain where I can kind of have two sets of text running at the same time, but again, most people don't, and many people type slowly and inaccurately. So do, don't do as I do. I'm knowing this. Um, okay, so on that note, I'm gonna stop looking at the chat room. I'm gonna kind of close that window. Um, I'm sorry if anybody has questions, but we're gonna get the observational research started, and I will look at the chat room after the observation before the second set of questions to see if there's anything you want me to ask the subject. And Shalene says, I can't type fast. Paper and pen is my friend. Oh yeah, and I also turned on emoji. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I think only subscribers can set up emoji, and that's just a few of you right now. Hi, Anita. So that is also why I'm wearing this microphone. I'm hoping it won't be as bad and echoey because my boyfriend's just over there. But let's give this a try. And let me just adjust a few of my windows. Give me a moment. And let's see. Windows, windows. I think I'm doing this right. Hold on. This is, you know, first time's an experiment. Okay, let's bring in our special guest and let's turn on his microphone. So you'll see how that echoes. So 
There's an, oh, echo. there's an echo. Sorry, everybody. It'll Sorry, only be I'll this episode. This episode. I, hope. I hope. Maybe others. Maybe others. Hi, special guest. Hi, special guest. Hi. Okay. So, okay. so we're going to get started. Okay. Um, um, pretend I've pressed pretend record I've pressed and record pretend you've previously you signed a consent form that, that says you agree to this. Oh, I actually did. Yeah. Sure. Okay, great. Um, um, record. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Debbie Hi, from Delta CX. We're, We're a research agency helping kitchen thingies to kitchen better know home cooks. Thank you so much for being, part, so of for being part of our study. And thanks for signing the thanks consent form earlier. earlier. I just wanted to double I check that I have your permission to record our session and broadcast it on YouTube. Oh, mo yeah, absolutely. That's Great. the goal. Okay. okay. Today will be pretty straightforward. Can you, straight Can you mute your computer while I yap? Mute my computer. Just mute the microphone while I redo this. Okay, then I'll have you turn it back on just so we don't get so much echo. Today will be pretty straightforward and shouldn't take more than an hour. I'll ask you some questions, we'll watch you cook a meal, and then I have some final questions. Please note that I'm hoping to hear you thinking out loud. Please tell me all of your thoughts and opinions, even if you think they're negative. We can't make things better without hearing where things are difficult or annoying. And you can't give us too much information, and there are no wrong answers. So let's start by getting to know you a little. Now unmute the microphone. Hey, hi. Okay, so let's okay. start with so the questions. Start. Questions. May I ask your age? May I ask your age? I'm 44. Okay, and who else in your household is living with you? Um, it's my girlfriend. Um, you might know her. She's nice. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, do you um, tend to cook mostly for cook yourself or for, yourself for others as well? Uh, I mostly cook my for myself because um, just because i'm a vegetarian and my girlfriend is not got it more got on it. this later <laughs> <laughs> more on this later okay, okay. thank you um thank you. and you don't have any uh, children have or any parents children living or with you parents. no okay just double checking right. thanks so, okay. do you or anybody you else or in your household in your follow household a special diet special or have diet food sensitivities uh well i do as i just said i'm a vegetarian so i guess that qualifies as special diet okay and um my girlfriend has allergies so we are um careful to not use um, some ingredients they're very specific so it's not that hard but either way we're just uh making sure that nothing wrong happens. Okay, and what kinds of things is she allergic to? Uh, she's allergic to caffeine, uh, red wine, and fish. Okay. So. Okay, that, that helps. That, that helps. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. How many times a day do you microwave a pre-prepared pre meal? Uh, I would say lately, um, once, almost once a day, because I'm uh, I started making big batches of um, veggie soups. So even if I'm not a big fan of microwaving, that's the the fastest thing to do. Okay, and can I ask why you're not a fan of microwaving? Uh, I'm not a fan of microwaving because it sometimes changes the the texture or the I wouldn't say the flavor, but uh, it somehow changes the the food in a way. So some things get super soft and hot, and two minutes later they're hard as a rock. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay, Got it. That, makes right. that makes sense. Um, and how many um, times how per day do you cook fresh or mostly from scratch? Uh, 
I would say once or twice. So that's really, <laughs> that qualifies as 50 to 100% of my daily meals. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so pretty much every day you're cooking something fresh from scratch. Uh, yes. Okay, got it. Um, do you enjoy cooking? Uh, uh, theoretically, yes, but uh, I'm not a big uh, like I'm not a big cooking talent. I just cook the, the bare minimum, and uh, I don't always have time to experiment or try recipes or this kind of things. Got it. Um, and when you say you don't have time to try recipes, is this because of work or school or other things in your life? Uh, mostly work, but uh, sometimes I just, um, I don't always like, at least during the week, uh, I don't, I prefer not to take like large amounts of time to uh, to try out something or to prepare uh, meals. So uh, I have some uh, go-to easy recipes that I, that I quickly cook just on the spot or I leave experiments sometimes on the, to the weekend. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Um, would you consider uh, cooking would you a consider hobby? <clears throat> Uh, not really for me, <laughs> but yeah, it can be a hobby. And, uh, I guess I just, uh, I had a bit of a cooking for hobby, uh, phase when I turned vegetarian, which was about nine years ago. And, uh, being the only vegetarian in the household and, uh, um, most of all, um, a vegetarian that likes to be nice to others. Uh, I thought I should take care of my meals, and so that's what I did. So nobody else in the household was uh, asked to cook my vegetarian meals. Got it. Okay. Got it. <laughs> that's very nice that's of you. Very nice. Um, um, let's, see. let's see. How often do you cook oh, with you family cook or friends or versus friends cooking alone? Uh, well, uh, most of the times I cook, uh, while my girlfriend is around and, um, she qualifies as both, uh, family and friend. Okay. And okay. is she helping you with she cooking? Is she doing something different? Doing something different? Uh, well, she's, she often helps me, especially when I, uh, start cooking something and uh, I forget it's on the burner and start smelling funny. So she sometimes saves my meals. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Um, um, but uh, would, would you say you that you are say cooking that alone, alone, uh, alone or cooking, uh, or cooking with, her with her as a team? Uh, well, we mostly cook by ourselves. Like, even if we are. Uh, sometimes we even uh, cook or prepare meals mm, nearby or uh, share the the kitchen. Uh, most of the time we just uh, cook different things. So uh, we just sometimes uh, experiment with like uh, soups or spices and she's the expert in spices. And there's there's a big spices rack over there. Got it. Got so it. that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Um, sure. Let's see. Let's see. Do, you Do you tend to cook in the to kitchen, cook in you're, the in kitchen you're in now? Yeah. And would you say that's a hundred percent of the time, of half the time? Um. Well, I would say we are 99% of the time considering the historical moment we are living. Let's put mm. it this way. <laughs> can, you be, can you be more specific about the historical moment you're living in? 
Well, I haven't been visiting family or friends in a while. So uh, a year ago, two years, mostly two years ago, I sometimes would cook at my uh, at my mom's house or sometimes out at friends' houses. But uh, now it's mostly home cooking for ourselves. So okay, that's what it. it is. Thanks. Um, have you ever taken cooking classes? Uh, no, I think I, I have not. Okay. If you think of one later, let me know. Yeah. Um, do you tend to use recipes, websites, or follow cooking blogs, videos, or TV shows? Uh, well, for, for most of the things I cook, uh, there's really not a recipe. It's like open the the bag of veggies or wash the veggies, put them in a pan or take pasta as you'll see later uh, and just um, and just cook it. So but whenever I I want to try something or I forget how something was done, uh, case in point, I made hummus in the last couple of weeks and I checked uh, the recipe uh, twice because I forgot how much the uh, tahini was I supposed to put there and all these things. So I mostly just quickly Google um, like quick hummus recipe in this case and um, I just take what uh, what looks uh, more interesting as a result. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Do you have any you have Internet of Things or smart home or appliances smart or devices? devices? Uh, yeah, we have uh, we have a couple. We mostly have uh, Google Homes. How many? How many? Uh, we have well, we have one in the in the living room. And um, and one in the bedroom. Okay. Do you have any okay. other have smart any home other devices smart or Internet of Things? Uh, not really. We had something uh, on the TV, but we turned that off. Like there was uh, another Google Assistant or I guess Alexa built in on the TV, but we never turned it on just for privacy. So. We tend to make a kind of uh, safe use of the technology in this case. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, so no so smart no home smart or Internet of Things devices in the kitchen related to any cooking? Uh, no, uh, but uh, no, I would say no. Okay, okay. got it. Um, to check. <laughs> um, yeah, always yeah. good to double check. <laughs> um, yeah. helps, our it helps our research go better. Can you tell me about, just know, quite generally, some of the easy or quick easy meals that you cook? Oh, uh, I usually am a big uh, fan of uh, fan. It, it's the quick thing, but uh, I make large use of uh, different kind of uh, veggie patties and um, like tofu patties or things like that. Are these things that you and made yourself or are these from the store? I usually buy them uh, at a store. I could show you. Sure, let's see them. Sure, okay. So this is uh, my favorite one. It's uh, soy um, veggie patties. Okay, and what okay. what makes those so good? Hmm? What makes them so good? Oh, they're they're good. They can be. They're. I mean, just like real patties they can be cooked in uh, a few different ways so you can make them crisper or 
uh, a little less so they're they taste like something they're not cardboard <laughs> and uh, most of all I, I one thing I personally like um, is that they don't try or tend to replicate anything that looks or or kind of feels like meat which is uh i hear it's a it's a big thing like uh, the impossible burger thing like i i just got out of eating meat because i didn't like meat so i'm not trying to replicate the uh, eco-friendly version of that then this is uh tofu same brand okay shout out to okay. to eurospin Who's if you ever Eurospin? want to sponsor eurospin is a uh, is a supermarket chain here in italy and they're generally good quality good prices and uh that's my go-to place for this kind of things i and this comes from the exotic little. So this is a uh, seeds and pumpkin burger. So I tried these a few weeks ago. They were actually good. And uh, yeah, I usually get um, quite a bit of these and I mix them and match them with um, veggies, sometimes eggs or uh, chickpeas and things like that, or beans in general, depending on uh, how inspired I am the day I'm cooking. Okay. I'll put them back into okay. the fridge. Yes, please do. Yes, please do. We just have a few more questions before you can get cooking. Okay. Um, let me ask you, are, do you have any examples of more difficult or complicated meals that you've attempted to cook? Uh, yeah, a whole lot of recipes that I tried and shamelessly done um, very badly. Like uh, a few months ago, I tried to make a, like a quick version of um, melanzane alla parmigiana, like parmigiana eggplant, no chicken, it's not a thing. Um, even because I wouldn't anyway, but um, so I know that when you make, for example, an eggplant parmigiana, you're supposed to deep fry your eggplant and it takes a lot of time and try to just uh make a quick version uh of, <laughs> of that <laughs> like italians who are listening please uh switch to your favorite channel uh i just make them with like um uh, mushy eggplant i had cooked um like parmigiano cheese and um and tomato sauce and put everything in the oven and uh they were actually nice enough <laughs> <laughs> okay so okay, that was so difficult that was and complex, complex and it didn't, and it didn't quite go as planned but it planned, turned out yeah, good enough for you yeah, I mean, I knew in the first place that it was not nearly as uh, as good as the original thing. And sometimes I really skip the recipes who I know are just too long or too complicated uh, to, uh, to prepare. Like my grandma used to make uh, like a stuffed eggplant uh, recipe, which was the best thing. Uh, in the world with pizza, uh, but it took like five hours to prepare because you really had to get up at five in the morning and start cooking. Okay, so, that's, quite a, that's, a that's a lot of commitment. Yeah, like delicious, but not my thing. And not your thing because not of flavor or time? Or time. 
Oh, definitely flavor, but not time and not patience to, to cook. Okay, got it. That's okay, interesting. It. Thanks. Yeah. Um, what tends um, to be your mood, to be your mood when you're cooking? Um, uh, I'm generally um, happy, go lucky kid. <laughs> so I I tend to be rarely in a bad mood. So um, I just get in a bit of a sad mood whenever I burn something. <laughs> But beside that, I uh, I would say I, I don't really get like a a happiness kick every time I I cook. Like it's uh, sometimes it's mostly related to survival than to pleasure of cooking. So that's something I should work on. That's okay. You're That's allowed okay. to be you. So, so uh, cooking doesn't really change your mood. Well, it changes changes my mood once I cooked, and uh, once and I once I cooked and I'm eating, that changes my mood for the better, especially when I'm hungry. So, cooking does have uh, this magical power. Okay. And while you're cooking, do you like to do something else, like listen to music or watch videos? Uh, I, I listen to music uh, quite often, or there's music in the house, because we are nice people over here with great musical taste. Uh, just to brag. Uh, or um, when... Um, when I need to be more quiet, uh, I sometimes listen to um, podcasts or uh, most of the times, um, like late night show on, on YouTube, like I remember Ruffin. Okay, thanks. I think I've got yep. one more question before you can start cooking. All right, I had to cook. Um, right. Um, right, there's actually two <laughs> questions. Um, first of all, are you using a recipe for today's cooking session? No, it's just the, the natural talent that was bestowed to me as Italian in uh, just for being Italian. No, it, it's actually something you, you learn by doing badly the first times, and then it's kind of routine. Okay, so this and, is made uh, like a family recipe? Well, it's, it's my own recipe and it's a quicker take of a recipe that uh, it's actually a thing uh, elsewhere in Italy. And so, again, Italians, if you're watching the show, you might want to switch. We, you might want to talk to me later. Talk to the hand. All right. Um, and before today's cooking session, what did you do to prepare any of the ingredients? Uh, well, in this case, uh, everything is pretty much uh, ready. I'll be cooking uh, spaghetti. And I um, actually didn't check if I had them in the pantry, but I'm quite positive I do. So I hope we, we don't have to switch to a sudden plan B. Okay, got okay, it. Okay. Um, so in that case, um, go ahead and start. And I'm just going to check with my assistants if they have any questions. But please, uh, if you have questions for me, let me know. But otherwise, please start. Okay, I'll start. Shall I mute my microphone? Um, not necessarily because I might want to hear you say something. Because while you're cooking, Think out loud, talk out loud, explain everything you're doing to us. Okay. To me. There wouldn't be an us in real life. Thank <laughs> you. 
first of all, water. And to be a bit more time efficient, why start with the cattle? No, oh. you're not supposed to see that. We're I'm not supposed to see that. You're a researcher and we don't want to see the sausage being made. <laughs> Accidentally, I do have a cattle. I'll turn this on. Can you please uh, talk out loud and tell us what you're doing and why? Oh, okay. So I'll be cooking uh, spaghetti, uh, which I don't dare calling cacio e pepe as they are usually called. Uh, so my quick version is spaghetti with uh, parmigiano and black pepper. And these are the spaghetti. Okay. So also for Italians, sorry, I'm cooking number three. I shouldn't. This is the spaghetti for people in a hurry or on a diet. And uh, sometimes I check both uh, uh, categories. So you, want, you usually want to make spaghetti number five if we're talking barilla. I'm going to go ahead and weigh uh, about 120 grams of spaghetti. As you can see, um, nature um, made the, the like the natural uh, portion of spaghetti much larger than 120 grams because, as we say in Italy, uh, 80 grams are just what you eat to check if the pasta is cooking. <laughs> I think he's filling for time. So. I'm uh, heating up water and I have a big pot here, probably even too big. I'll, I'll quickly get the other one. Uh, hello, how are Hi. we doing with the time? Um, do we have 25 minutes. Okay, so... Is there anything you do while the water is boiling? Well, uh, usually I watch Seth Meyers or I uh, sing songs or not sing or just wait. Does that mean you'll be singing for us? Uh, no, but I do have a recommendation. Everybody in the world should listen to a song Musica called yeah. Musica Leggerissima. Where is it? I knew that was good. Musica Leggerissima by Colapesce and Di Martino which is the current source of the best memes in the Italian interwebs. And uh, you should listen to that. I, I accidentally had it ready on my phone. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so the the water is uh stop looking. I, I shouldn't read. Usually it's uh uh, so is the water okay. still boiling? It's just uh, stopped boiling, so I'll pour it in the pot. I... Yep. Don't forget to think out loud, talk out loud. Yeah, I generally, I, I was just saying, I generally don't count the water, like how many cups or whatever. The rule of thumb is you should have enough water that uh, that's just enough to cover the, the amount of pasta you are uh, cooking. And don't forget to put the pasta in the pot. <laughs> Think out loud, what are you working on now? Make sure that all the pasta goes underwater uh, as quickly as possible without leaving part of the spaghetti hanging outside of the water because that's not good. And then add salt, not too much. Uh, usually your palm would be, uh, where is it? I don't know, I lost my art just this amount of salt will do just make a little shell with your hand that's uh, your dose And while you're cooking, just uh, move the spaghetti around. Otherwise, they stick to each other and they become a hard mess of gooey stuff. We don't want that. And then what do you normally do now while it's cooking? Uh, while that's cooking, I usually... Uh, prepare what I need later, which I'll do. So um, I'll get the other two ingredients I need and um, a dish. And I need uh, cheese and black pepper. I have black pepper here. I'll put it here. And Uh, this is the cheese and shout out to Conrad if you ever want to make me your pasta influencer. And where was that cheese? Where was that cheese? This cheese is um, is um, where is it? It's Grana Padano D.O.P. Uh, DOP is basically like they make sure that it comes from the place it's supposed to come from. So it's usually good quality uh, cheese and grana padano. I guess most of you know that it's uh, a good Italian cheese. I'm sorry, I actually sorry, meant where did you have it stored? Oh, uh, I stored it uh, in the freezer because I don't, uh, usually don't, but uh i don't cook too much pasta unfortunately during the week so uh if you keep this cheese in the um, in the fridge for too much time without using it it will grow mold so it's uh as you as you can probably hear it doesn't really um become a, a block like it's it's still good and um and alive. I'll check the pasta.
we have a few minutes to go. Um, usually there is a cooking time on the pasta, but you also uh, just check it and taste it as you go. Unless you're cooking some kinds of pasta who have like 15 minutes of cooking. One of the reasons why I get spaghetti number three is that they're very fast to cook. So they're usually ready in like five minutes. Uh, another thing I do, I just to get ready, I took a dish. Oh, I forgot something. I missed a very important step. Anyway, uh, we'll have to skip my penguin's apron. I was supposed to wear my penguin's apron, so no apron, that's just a tablecloth. And uh, back to what I was doing. Pasta is pretty much ready, so... I take a little bit of olive oil and pour some in the dish. Then add a little cheese. Another good thing that you want to do while you don't want to do while cooking is get distracted to find a funny apron and focus on pasta. So I'm going to use the strainer and the pasta. So then we have pasta we put it in the dish all of it come on and the next thing you do is to add some cheese on top of it then some more oil, at least that's what I do. Not too much. And then get your pepper. In this case, we got a uh, fancy black pepper grinder. And just grind a good amount of pasta of black pepper on the pasta and then uh, mix everything usually not in front of the computer your computer has frozen Um, no, I think since you're done cooking and since you just happen to live with me, why don't you bring your pasta and eat it and just come sit next to me on camera?
something on my head. Um, sorry about that, everybody. It looks like his um, computer froze. Um, he is basically done. I'm going to ask him the next questions, and I'll sh I, you won't see my notes. I'll show them later. Um, yeah, you can step in. <laughs> um, so they're probably not going to hear you very well, so let me turn on the, the main mic. Hold on. Oh, you have a green shirt. You're see-through. All right. Oh, this is only going to be one year. I didn't fix this yet. All right. So this is uh, this is not ready for prime time because I didn't set up everything on the new. We are live. Uh, see, look, you froze. All right. So we only have a few minutes left. So let me ask you some quick questions. Um, why start with a kettle? Talking to here. Oh, hi. Hi. I start with the kettle because uh, if you want to save time, you can uh, either put cold water in the pot and do the very Italian thing of slowly have the water cook. It doesn't change the flavor. So if you warm the pasta in the kettle, put it already boiling in the pot, you save time and energy. Okay, so using a kettle saves time and energy? And then, do you ever measure the amount of water you're putting in? I usually put uh, Hello, everybody. <laughs> I usually put uh, the maximum allowed in the pot, and for the amount of pasta I cook is uh, enough. So I usually will use all of that or a little less. using spaghetti number three. Spaghetti number three are okay, but some kind of uh, pasta recipes must come with the exact kind of pasta you, you are supposed to use. So spaghetti number three is not the perfect uh, size for Uh, why did you weigh the pasta? I weigh the pasta from oh, just just because I'm um, a nice man and I'm not trying to have sex. And may I ask if you're on a diet? He's almost see-through already. I hope you all got that. Um, did you break the pasta to get it into that smaller pot? No. The, the secret is that if you wait a second, the pasta gets soft and it will all fit in the pot. Do you ever use a timer for your pasta? Uh, hard. Any particular reason? I, I usually skip it. Okay. So you're really co kind of constantly checking and keeping an eye? Yeah, usually I just skip it. I don't know. Uh, which parts of that recipe are traditional?
and is your is your version very different other than you used a different spaghetti it's size it's less creamy, less creamy. Less why is it less creamy Okay. Okay, got it. Thanks. Um, now I have some uh, final questions for you before we let you go. Let's also check if there's anything from uh, my assistant. Let's see. What? <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> what? Oz is here? No. Oz? Yeah, Oz yeah. is Excel and Fire. Is that Excel Salman Rushdie? Well, no, it's Pierre Mario. Okay. Um, do you ever forget your steps in the cooking process? Okay, um, let me see if there's a qu really quick way to get my notes on top of here. Hold on a second. Oh, wrong one. Let's see, desktop capture. It's live TV, everybody. Love on the rocks. All right. So a few questions at the end, then we'll let you go. Um, after you cook, do you tend to photograph it or share it on social media? Okay. Um, and thank you for eating. You want to eat on camera? Someone's sending you a serpent. I don't know why. Um, uh, let's see. And who in your household does the shopping? How often do you go shopping at grocery stores or supermarkets? Um, usually every week or so. When you say once a week now, well, did that change? It used to be most weeks, but now it's more like once a week. Okay, and do you get grocery or supermarket delivery? Okay, thanks. Um, have you tried any of the meal prep delivery services like Blue Apron or HelloFresh? No. Are those services available in your area? That's fine, don't worry about it. Um, have any of your shopping or cooking habits changed because of the pandemic?
cooking and eating has become more boring? Okay. Um, anything else that's changed because of the pandemic with re in, in relation to shopping or cooking? So the behavior in the supermarket has changed. Um, how so? Okay, thanks. That makes sense. Um, do you use a paper shopping list or are you using an app or something else? Okay, thanks. Um, what is your dream kitchen smart home appliance? That is the dream. Yeah. Okay, so your dream appliance would be something that decides what to cook you and cooks it for you. This is truly house of the future. Yeah. Okay. And um, if you had a magic wand and could improve anything about cooking or meal preparation, what would you change? By the way, when you have a terrible subject like this, you can't make a lot of faces. I'm just doing this because it's my boyfriend. You got to be poker face. <laughs> You're <Okay>. fired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, no, anything, any, what could you, imp what would you uh, improve about cooking or meal preparation other than pizza is calorie free? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, when you talk about things should be easier to clean, can you tell me about something you use that is difficult to clean?
not even going to write that because I know you're just baiting me. Okay. Um, anything else you think could be improved about um, cleaning utensils, pots, pans, spoons, other things? Okay. Okay, I get it. Well, thanks for our time together. Thank you so much for being a part of our study. It was great to learn more about how you tend to cook meals at home. My assistant will email you in the next few days to get you your $100 Kitchen Thingies gift card. Do you have any last questions for me? Um, can I now eat my pasta? It's cold. I guess so. Thanks. Bye. Sorry I didn't let you eat your pasta. I know there's only like one ring of hell worse than that. All right. All right, let's see what the chat room is saying and uh, talk to some people in the chat room before uh, before we sign off for today. Um, any questions for me and some of my style and things? I'm going to try to roll back to see what's been going on here. And thanks again to uh, Tango Studio for the super chat. I think I saw that go by. Um, thanks to everybody. Don't forget we also do, um, let me put this up. Because I, I don't have my panel. Like I didn't set everything up yet. It's, I'm on supercomputer. Um, so please remember to subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot more with this in the coming weeks. And ring the bell so you know when uh, I'm live. And uh, we'll go back to real microphone tomorrow. And uh, and don't forget, we've got um, memberships now on YouTube. So click join and you can join for as little as $3 a month. And uh, I appreciate your support. Denise says, how can Debbie stay serious? I do my best. I did not, I did not have as much poker face as I intended. Because you do have to have poker face even when, you're, uh, even when your person is wacky. Um, let's see. Uh, See, Kayleen wanted to know what pasta numbers were. Yeah, if I didn't know what they were, I would have asked. Um, but I happen to know, so I didn't ask. Um, Lasego says, "Did you?" Oh, yeah, I put that one in. Um, how does he feel about walking around the kitchen so much to use and get different things? I guess we can ask you that. How do you feel about walking around the kitchen so much to use and get different things? That's sad. No, I'm kidding. We can't be judgmental. Yeah, but sometimes. And I don't, you know, I don't think we walk around our kitchen too much. You designed the kitchen and built it. He designed and built the kitchen, y'all. Um, Kayleen says, this kind of confirms my suspicions that 30 minutes is really pushing it to try to chase down valuable information. Yes. Um, Tango says, I want to know the rationale behind the research questions and what we do afterwards with the information. Okay, so we did the research questions on Monday. You can go back and watch that episode uh, to see how that went. That'll be in the micro lessons playlist already. Um, and what we do with that information will come in a few weeks. Sorry, I'm having puffy hair from wearing this. Um, Kayleen says, I'm not criticizing Deb, but my research plans are 30 minutes. Sounds like 45 would be better. Yeah. Um, let's see, Sutherland said, I just joined, Can we, we can't hear him. Yeah, I know, his, his whole system went kaplawi. Um, Deb is typing what he's saying. Yeah, don't freak out, we can't hear him. Uh, thank you, Pierre Mario. Um, and Wilson says, even if you have two hours with someone, but you don't ask the right questions, it can still be a waste of time. I learned the hard way. I wasn't asking the right questions. Yeah. This was awesome, says Shalene. Thank you. 
Uh, Constantinus says, really helpful watching this. Serena says, grazie per Mario. Um, Kayleen wants to know more about why pasta numbers are important. Yeah. Yeah, the, the pasta numbers are, represent different thicknesses and textures of pastas. So his number three is a thinner spaghetti than the number five. And I can tell you over here, they're very picky about that. I just happened to already know that. I didn't need to ask him about that. Do you think being too poker facey can hinder the conversation and rapport building? Yeah, I'm definitely um, very smiley and friendly on my stuff. I'll try to do that the rest of the week. Um, I was just trying not to egg him on because we, we get distracted and we get into our own catchphrases and I didn't want to do that. But for the rest of the week, I'll, I'll try to be more typical um, me on that. So yeah, you, you don't want to be too poker facey, but if someone does something weird or they crack a joke, you don't want to do what I was doing, where I rolled my eyes, I'm face palming. That's just because this was my boyfriend. You definitely would not do that with a real research subject. Um, I will show you more of that when we continue into the week because we have another cook tomorrow. Um, Kayleen's like, you built the kitchen? Yep, by hand and did all the tiling and Cad drew it and whatever. Oh, Wilson says, will you let them know ahead of time I will use a poker face for this session? No. And, and again, it's not that I use a poker face. I, tr I try to react neutrally um, to most things, and I use neutral phrases. You know, when th people say things, I'll say, that's interesting, or I'll make a note of that, or, um, but I don't say, oh, that's good, or, oh, that's bad. I don't agree with that. So you, it's not so much that I have a poker face. It's just that I try to maintain neutrality about whatever they're saying or doing. But I do try to be friendly and nod and whatever, but I don't want to throw in enough of my stuff that I'm trying to be too much of the conversation. I've got an emoji on my face. I have a, a sweaty head. Um... Kayleen says, my boyfriend's dad bid ho built houses for a living. Lesego says, this was very insightful, especially for a newbie. Do y'all think the other subjects want to eat while answering? It depends. You know, here in Italy, I can tell you once the pasta gets cold, people want to kill you. So I really shouldn't have kept him so long from his pasta. But we'll see what the other subjects uh, want to do. Um, Chang's putting up the angry Deb face emoji. Um... Uh, yeah, any other questions before we clock out of here? And um, remember, since this is archived on YouTube, you will be able to um, listen back to it and make your own notes. Definitely do make notes because remember, we're going to come together in a couple of weeks and we're going to do a session where we all go into a mural board and we put up our notes from all eight sessions. Hopefully all eight show up, but if they don't, that's typical. And then we're going to start trying to break it into themes and making sense of it. And I don't want it to just be my notes. Let's have it be your notes also. And if any of you were trying to take notes during that session, you can see how hard it is to take notes and keep listening. So really don't do it. Don't do what I was just doing. Um, Chang says, I found it difficult to ask users questions while taking notes. Absolutely. Many people do. So please don't do it. Um, so um, Kayleen says, so many thoughts. I can't articulate them all. Okay, you've got time. Chang says, I can focus on one thing at a time. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah, you believe me, that's, uh, that's normal. And if we want to just look back at the memories, ah, uh, remember when, that's your computer frozen. Remember that's, when, that's, that's a beautiful moment. That's beautiful. Um, Kayleen says, I will wear wireless earbuds so I can hear everything. I think that'll be great. That'll really help. And I'll use my regular microphone. I just didn't want to use it today because of the uh, echo in our house. Our, our, you can't see it, but, you know, everything's very close to everything in our small house. Um, Wilson says... Have you checked out transcript tools to take notes for you? So remember, a transcription tool doesn't take notes for you. A transcription tool just tells you what people said. And hopefully you'll notice that I made notes about more than things that were said. I made notes about some of the reactions and I made notes about what I observed. So remember that you want to go back and watch, even if you have a transcript, you want to go back and watch the observational part and write down 
What is this person doing? And remember, think ahead to your task analysis, tools, knowledge, workarounds. He had certain tools that he used. He had the knowledge of different types of spaghetti and that he wanted to use a thinner one than the traditional um, uh, recipe calls for so that his cooking would go faster. Um, so again, the, to think about making notes that will play later into our task analysis. Luckily, he didn't get stuck or run into any obstacles, but what he did required tools, knowledge, and workarounds. So when we're making that task analysis, we'll make sure we, we want to include those details. If you're not familiar with task analysis, of course, go see um, uh, in the micro lessons playlist, the task analysis video. And somebody's mentioning me on Twitter. I'm almost afraid to see what that says. Oh, someone's just liking. Um, let's see. Kayleen says, it was hard to observe because I couldn't hear a lot on his end, but I will re-watch. Yeah, hopefully his sound, his sound seemed to come through well to me through this system, but we'll make sure that with all the other people who are cooking, we super test the system. I think uh, wearing earbuds or something will be better for the other cook so that you're not getting my echo uh, into your computer. But, you know, again, this is really, you know, seat of pants, no curriculum here unprofessional equipment to just try to uh, uh, make this go. And hopefully everybody enjoyed some of the new effects I've set up, like the tip jar, which actually uh, reacted to Tango Studios uh, Super Chat. Thank you so much. And I'm, I've got just a few more subscribers uh, to meet my March goal. So please do subscribe here. And of course, I hope you will uh, sign up for the memberships as well. Kayleen says a lot going on, like trying to see where he was going, counter f was far away from the camera, etc. Yeah, that's definitely one of the drawbacks of an observational study being done remotely. Obviously, when you're there, very often you might have yourself and one or two other researchers or assistants. It's very often and you set up multiple cameras at multiple angles to record things from different angles. That's the non-pandemic world. But while we're remote, this is what we're doing, and and it's going to be perfect and imperfect at times. So the you know it's going to be the best we can do. I didn't want to ask him to keep re-angling his computer. Oh, you're over by the sink. Please angle your computer. I just kind of went with it, and then I can always ask him later, like, what were you doing at the sink, or something like that, if I am not sure. Um, or, hey, you went out of the range of, of your camera, can you tell me what you were doing? Like when he went to, I know the cheese is in the freezer, but I asked him anyway, because he walked out of the frame of the camera, and he suddenly had cheese. So I said, where, you know, where do you store your cheese? Um, let's see. Chang says, I usually review sessions using a transcript tool. I like to note down the stuff I think is important. Yeah, because not everything he said was important, especially when he was trying to be a comedian. Oh, thank you for the smiley face. There it is. Um, any other thoughts or questions before I go? Because I have a real research interview in 15 minutes uh, to conduct. So let me know if you have any uh, questions. And what is this window? Oh, it's my window showing me. Hello. See, anything else? Otherwise, um, remember, we've got people cooking for the next few days in a row, all at 6.30 p.m. Italy time. If you are one of the cooks, please double check the time in the Google um, calendar invite I sent you because you changed clocks and I didn't. Thank you for to Abhishek. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Um, Shalene is applauding. So remember, tomorrow's cooking is Shalene. Yay! Also uh, notice, uh, for those of you in the Slack channel, notice how long the early questions took and start to think about whether or not we really need all of those questions and if there are any we can cut because I think we st ended up running low on time and I don't think he gave unreasonably long answers. So we might think about cutting a couple of questions um, just to make the, the timing work a little bit better. We can also see how tomorrow goes, but comment in the Slack uh, channel it, what questions maybe you think could go. Tomorrow is cooking with Shalene, Friday is cooking with Julia, and Saturday is cooking with Kayleen, Sunday is Maggie, Monday should be Joel Barr. Um, so there you go. Um, Chang is saying, whatever you cook, please share the recipe. He's hungry. Um, so let's see. What else is everybody saying before we 
I noticed that too, but I liked a lot of them. I don't know who you're referring to. Serena says, thanks. Thanks for this opportunity. Yeah, we're going to do this a bunch more times together. And then we are going to um, analyze and synthesize this. And so make sure you're taking notes so that we can bring all these together. Um, you don't have to hang out here. You have something to say. You want to say it into the microphone so people can hear you? I don't think so, but okay, so my boyfriend wants me to mention that some of the reason why some of the pieces today aren't quite set up right and my windows weren't in the right place and I couldn't put anybody's comments up on the screen and blah, 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 is that supercomputer arrived and I'm still setting it up and it looks like accidentally half of my streaming settings showed up and the other half, I guess, are still on my laptop. So, uh, so hooray, supercomputer is here and uh, I am very far from running out of memory very far. So, um, oh, let's see, Kayleen says about the questions. Um, yeah, we'll see. So thanks everybody. I'm going to log off for now, but I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow at the usual time so we can see what Charlene's going to cook for us. And, uh, you know, and if you try Pierre Mario's recipe, tell us in the Slack channel how it went. Thanks everybody. I'm going to find the, because I don't have my panel, I don't have my panel set up. So I have to look at all of my buttons to see where's my ending music where's my ending music <sighs> seriously if you saw what I'm looking at I'm never going to find it I might just have to press stop I cannot find I cannot find my closing 10 second video anyone oh there it is number 59 uh Elijah says, can't make it tomorrow, but we'll look at the recording. Yeah, these will all be on YouTube. I'll move them into the micro lessons playlist, and you can watch them back and take your notes. Um, Anita says, supercomputer looks like a spaceship engine. It does, but I, it, luckily it's quiet. All right, everybody, we'll see you tomorrow for more cool cooking. Thanks, and uh, stay safe. Delta CX, available for CX and UX consulting, projects, and training. Contact us for a free consultation.